Hi there, my name is Hugh Boyd and welcome to wedding photography tips and tricks that I've learned over the last few years. So let's get right into it. I am a wedding photographer on the side of my nine to five and I really love doing wedding photography and over the last few years of doing it, I've just sort of, I've just gathered a load of tips and tricks in just a quick bullet point, you know, succession so that you can take them to yourselves for your own uh, wedding photography prospers or whatever you wish to do in the future. So get a pen, pencil, get a piece of paper and start writing these down because you're definitely gonna want to uh, take these on board. The first one that I've got is um, watch your ISO. So the ISO is on your camera, the sensitivity of it. Um, more often than not in my previous earlier weddings, I was like getting it to, <sighs> I could push my camera to like ISO 2000 on my old Canon 80D before I started seeing like in dark scenarios I was like having the shutter speed on 80th of a second and the shut and the ISO on 2000 I was like these pictures are just not coming out take a note of your ISO always watch your ISO because you'll not realize that when pulling pulling them into edit you're just going to have really muddy images that's if your sensor on your camera isn't amazing you want to keep your ISO as low as possible so that's my ISO top tip the next one I've got is uh, watch the, watch the frame watch the picture you know you're taking a picture and more often than not I did in the past I had clients tell me love the photos but you know here now and every now and again you've got these obstructions and distractions in the photographs and it's just like damn I should have seen that I should be aware of what's going off in the frame, but you know, on the wedding day, it's busy, it's hectic, it's stressful. So the last thing you wanna, wanna be thinking about is like the little details, because after pulling them in to edit them afterwards, it's like, oh, I wish I'd seen that object. And it's such a, you know, so annoying having to like edit things out and crop and airbrush it and like uh, clone stamp tool it, oh my God. Um, so that's one of my top tips is to, um, just, you know, crop, move to a different position, get that, you know, odd looking tree branch out of the way, you know, ask that person in the background to move out of the way because at the end of the day, it's the client, it's the, it's the couples that are the most important in all of this. And if, you know, they're getting photographs are so not the best, not your best, then, you know, that's not your best. Sometimes I forget this every now and again, but it's stay off your phone. Um, every now and again, I will, get my Instagram up and start doing like a little story because it's good and I've got my partner there with me taking images as a second shooter, vice versa. I'll take pictures and videos of her doing it, which is fine. Top tip is to stay off your phone as much as possible. Um, you know, don't be there scrolling on Twitter or Facebook or anything like that. You're there for a business, you're hired for the day, taking photos of everything and you wanna, you wanna look professional really. So make sure you still have your phone and if you're on your phone you're looking like you're doing video or photo content number four is uh, be polite um you want to ask politely you want to go up to them before you start snapping you want to go up to them hi there oh you guys look great can i take a photo of them of you guys you know compliment them uh and then they'll go you know they might be taking a bite of something to eat or having a drink and they'll go, oh, this guy's come up to me and this girl's come up to me and she's asked, they've asked me nicely to take a photograph of us and I'm gonna be more willing because you've been nice instead of snapping away and then making a joke saying, yeah, I gotta do it, I'm a photographer. Sometimes that has worked for me in the past, just sort of shooting off and, you know, hoping that they'll be okay with it. You know, if they are stood like a few feet away and they're sort of like, oh, hang on, he's taking photographs of us now. Are we meant to be smiling? Because more often than not, people want to smile. They want to, you know, they want to be happy and they want to show their best side. So if you're just going to be snapping there, you know, willy nilly, um, don't do that. So go up to them, be polite, ask them if they'd like a photograph and they'd be more than willing to, you know, do that. Next, number five, this is the fifth point that I've got is watch your exposure. So on your camera, you've got like a little histogram which, which looks like a, a graph. So all that white information, I've got Canon, so I'll see like a, it's a square graph and it's like white information. So if all of the white information uh, is up towards the right hand side, that means you're too overexposed. And if your histogram is showing all the information towards the lower end, that means it's too dark. So you've got to watch out for that because when you're snapping and taking photos, um, you'll, you'll forget that you know, you're in a certain setting and you've just completely done the last 100 photos, underexposed, 
or overexposed and it's like damn 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 i should have taken an extra second so always take an extra second minute hop through your settings make sure that you know whilst you're taking photos your ev slider at the bottom where it says plus minus one minus two plus one plus two isn't overexposed either that's going to give you a good indication of how the exposure is looking for example if you're taking a, uh, a picture this is what i've learned of, uh, of the couple there's a lot of sky sky is obviously bright so it's going to overexpose the image but then in the shadows you've got the couple and you've got the shadows you know the foreground the trees the foliage things like that sometimes you want to overcompensate and um, overexpose i mean you want sometimes you do want to do that because uh, you want to make sure that you've got the data information whilst you're doing post-production of the um of the couple of the um you know the, the scene for example if you do middle exposure on a scene that is quite blown out and mostly sky sometimes i do want to keep that information quite high um uh, overexposed because I will have the information, the data in the shadows. If I was to meter, light meter for the sky, um, I would then have a very dark foreground image if there was a lot of uh, data in my, uh, you know, the sky was very dark, which means when I tried to pull up and let's say I was on ISO 2000 on my full frame camera, yes, that's fine, but if I was on ISO 2500 3000 4000 and i was in a bright you know brightish scenario i would have a muddy image or if, even if i was on iso 200 or 300 and you've underexposed an, an image so that you've saved yourself um you're going to pull up the uh exposure and it's going to be quite it's going to be quite muddy and grainy and noisy so always watch your histogram take a tripod i I don't like taking tripods or monopod. I've got a monopod inside of my tripod. Oh, I really don't like taking tripod because it means that I'm lugging it around, it's on my shoulder, it doesn't fit inside of my camera bag, it doesn't fit, even fit on the side, I've got to strap it on. You will not believe how many photos I took and I wish that I had a tripod because I trust myself on 60th of a second, okay? But don't, don't trust yourself on 60th of a second because when you're at a wedding, it's high intense moment, things are moving, someone's blinking, especially when you've got, you're taking a photo of 50 people in a group shot, it's an action, it's a still. You want to make sure that the guy in the end isn't moving, you know, and if there is action, people coming out of the church, there's people throwing uh, confetti. I always keep my uh, shutter speed always above 125th of a second to make sure that you've caught the moment and it's nice and crisp, so, uh, and, and things like this, I go back to the monopod and the tripod point. Um, it's low light, it's getting dark, you're trying to push your ISO up a bit. I don't like pushing my ISO up. I want to keep it on like max 800. Um, for example, if I want to do really nice, dreamy, creamy images, post-production, you want to keep your ISO nice and low. So take a tripod, get your shutter speed on 125th, 250th, so that you've got a crisp image. But then taking that tripod means that you can put your ISO down to 100 or 200 um, and then get your shutter speed at 60th because the couple, you've told them to be still, you can do, you can try even 20th of a second or 8th of a second, which means that they're, they're still, they're posed, they're under a tree. It's very, it's quite dark. It's not, it's sunset, you know, it's getting there, which means when, when you've got a tripod, you can push it to 60th, 30th, 20th of a second. So last couple of weddings I've done, I've taken a tripod and I've thanked the Lord that I took it because that means I can get the ISO down and I can get those really creamy, you know, images without any noise or grain in them at all. So take a tripod, be extra professional, be extra on your game. Uh, one of the points I've written here is be clear and decisive when speaking to people because one of the things is you stood uh, 20 foot away from a group shot it's windy people are chatting they're having a drink they're having a smoke they're doing what they want and they're stood far away and you're trying to organize a group shot and you you're speaking not very loudly and you know the half listening to you and then the cup you know people are making jokes to themselves going what's he said oh i don't know what he's saying and, oh what's going on because more often than not people coming out of the church that's when sometimes we do group shots 
because the light's nice, it's the middle of the day, you're under a tree, um, and it's, it's just a nice scenario. So we get people stood, and you want to make sure that the instructions that you're giving, they're clear, they're decisive. You don't want to be like, uh, so, um, I don't know what we're doing here, I don't know what's coming up next. Should we go over here? I don't know that. Stop, think, take a second, before you go up to the couple, before you go up to a group of people, think about what you're gonna do. Look at the light. What's gonna go on here? Think about what you're gonna do because things change. If you really don't wanna repeat yourself, it's boring, you know, you're gonna waste your breath. My next point is be professional. You know, don't sit there rolling your eyes or munching on a bar with your mouth open or slurping your drink, stood next to people. This is your business. This is, be, this is your professionalism, so be professional and people will really look up to you. I always make sure, especially in the summer weddings, is take lots of water, take lots of food, because, you know, it's getting towards the end of the day, oh my God, I need a drink, I'm only a little bit of water. Sometimes the couple do want to include you in the meal, so they'll give you a couple of meals. More often than not, they will include you in the meal plan, but we always go to the local shop in the morning, get a meal deal, you know, stack the bags up, take some ice packs, take some waters. Those are my top tips for 2022. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And um, if you want to see more stuff like this, I will definitely be making it. And I look forward to you seeing you in the next one. See ya.